Aldis podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our AI in Action series, where leading minds in AI from across the world share their story, success, and advice. AI in Action cuts through the hype and explores the true impact of artificial intelligence in our world today. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Chris Whitney. Chris is the Chief Digital Officer at Monarch Tractor. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you, JP. I'm looking forward to the podcast. So, Chris, let's start with yourself, please. Can you give us a a bit of background on your journey through technology from where you got started, some of the roles you've held along the way, and take us up to today where you're the Chief Digital Officer for Monarch? I started my journey at the end of the 1970s. I I went to university in the early 80s and studied computer science. And whilst I was there, I got enamored with artificial intelligence. So I, I did my degree and my master's degree, and then I started working for some research labs in the UK, British Telecom, Maconi, and then I ended up with HP in Bristol working on AI. And then I moved over during the, the dot-com rush to California, to Silicon Valley to do some startup things. But I also worked with HP labs in Palo Alto. And then more recently have been out in Asia, in, in Singapore. I was running the research labs for Hewlett Packard focused on AI, big data and cloud computing. And then a couple of years ago, in 2019, came back to Silicon Valley to join Monarch because I I met the founders of Monarch and I really liked the vision. And and I could see how, with the vision of Monarch, how my background and AI and data science can really help Monarch on the vision and the journey that that Monarch is taking farmers on. So Mm. at at a high level, span three geographies, um, computer science, software all the way, but AI is my passion. Excellent. Well, thank you for that. And we will very much jump into the AI in just a moment. But for people listening who are not familiar with Monarch, tell us who you are. Who are Monarch as a business? What do you guys do? And then we can go into your role as the Chief Digital Officer and, and how you're bringing AI to the table. Yeah, absolutely. And so Monarch Tractor itself, our core value proposition and our mission is basically to enable profitable farming practices for a farmer. So basically, we want to take a farmer from sustainable farming practices to sustainable farming practices, but look at the economics of doing that so that a, a farmer doesn't make the prank, but we can also ensure that we have quality and quality yield and make sure that we don't have the planet. We're a, we're a technology company and we start with a wheel on the ground, which is the tractor, and we go all the way up through electrification of that tractor. We do we make the tractor driver optional through our, our autonomous driving capabilities and we connect the tractor to the cloud where we have various AI and SaaS applications and analytics engines running in the cloud so that we can help the farmer understand how they go from non-sustainability to sustainability. At a high level, that's Monarch Tractor. Very cool. So you're bringing automation and robotics to the farming industry. It's quite a complex problem. Can you give us some insight into what your role entails? What What are your responsibilities? What is the, the team that you oversee? And just what is it like there day to day? And I say from a technology stack, there's two halves. There's myself as a chief digital officer. I really look after the best way to think of it. I do all of the software and the data in our technology stack. And then I work with one of the co-founders, Zachary, who's our CTO. He basically deals with a physical tractor and we, we meet in the roof. So what I have to do on a day-to-day basis with the teams that I have here, and, and my teams are distributed um, globally, is we look at our electric tractor and we say, what sensors do we need to put on that tractor so that we can automate it? And uh, what computer capabilities do we need to put in the tractor so that we can do, we can run our AI? And what's the software algorithms that we need to run on the tractor so that we can make the tractor self-driving? And how do we connect that tractor to the cloud so that we can get communications, command and control and data to from the tractor? And then what's analytical and data science tech should we put in the cloud so that we can provide web-based and mobile-based interfaces to our farmers so that they can do things like they can see where the tractor is on the farm, they can see what the tractor is doing, they can tell the tractor to move into an autonomous routine now because it's safe. So we cover everything from, like I say, wheels on the ground through to the sky. But basically what I do is I focus on all of the sensors, the computes, 
the software and the data that basically enables our technology stack. So Chris, you and I were speaking off air previously about why you're so excited about the use of AI in not just robotics, but in the farming industry. Can you give us some insight into the the impact there? Are there recent examples or stories which you could tell us that would just demonstrate just how revolutionary this is? And then for people who are interested in taking AI to this field, what is it that you can tell us about why it's a great place to work? Yeah, absolutely. And so I've worked in many different domains. And when I started working at Monarch and we we looked at farming in particular, it's really a great area to apply um, AI and and robotics because it it covers the three Ds that we typically look for when we're looking for where we should apply robotics. We're looking basically to look at dull, dirty or dangerous jobs. And if you actually look at what happens on a farm in terms of the tractor driver has to do to produce our food, it is a very dull, monotonous job. It's a very dirty job and with a lot of the chemicals that the farmers use on the farm, it's a very dangerous job. So if if we can get the track, if we can get the driver off the tractor and get him safely in the barn, and then if we can get him from the barn to a back office and then eventually get him from the back office to a beach using AI and robotics, we can do some very positive change, not just to the people that are working on the farm, but also to how our food is produced and the impact that we have on the planet as we produce those foods. When I first joined a couple of years ago, and we, we took our initial tractors to a farm in Northern California. It was, a, it was a vineyard where we have our test sites. We were watching what people were doing when they were driving tractors. And, you know, you, one thing you start to realize with, with high intensity farming is there's just row upon row upon row upon row upon row of crops, whether these are, 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 are grapes or cherries or almonds or citrus. Everything these days is going into what they call vertical trellis. And for example, one of the one of the farms we work on, there's a 50 acre field, which has 75 kilometers of row length, which basically means if you drive a tractor through that field to do either mowing or spraying or weeding, as a driver, you're sitting on that tractor, because you're typically doing about five kilometers an hour, you're sitting on that tractor for 15 hours, just looking at the row, keeping the tractor in the center of the row, but you're also having to control the work, you're looking at the implement at the back. So one of the first things we did was to say, in that particular instance, how can we get the how can we get the the driver to take his hands off the wheel as a first point of getting them off the tractor? And so we started looking at vision, the use of vision to position the tractor down the center of the row. And then we proved that using vision, we can basically control the steering of that tractor and keep the tractor in the center of the row, which is basically the first stage of us getting the farmer off to getting the operator off the tractor. And if we can get him off the tractor, And for those 15 hours, uh, typically the labor rate for tractors is going up year after year. Let's say it's $25 an hour in Northern California. Basically, to the actual owner of the farm, you're saving about $450 of driver operator time. But from a personal operator, the driver of the tractor, you're actually taking a very um, dull job away from him so that he can can focus on the high value stuff, which is actually controlling the implement, making sure that the cut of the mower is good, making sure that the spray is going on the plants. So you're starting to tackle one of the Ds, but you're also doing it profitably because you have a double impact, an impact for the farmer in terms of of saving money, but also an impact on the person who's doing the job in basically making it less monotonous for the person. So that's just one example. You are listening to the Aldis Podcast. When you're looking to scale your team or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions, www.aldis.com. Talk to us about the team that you've assembled, and I know you're continuously uh, bringing in new people to, to support the growth. When you're speaking to data scientists and engineers, machine learning people, what is it that you tell them about the work to get them interested and excited about Monarch Tractor over some of the, some of the other opportunities available to them? And there's a couple of a couple of things that we approach it. We're a very mission oriented company. And so when I talk to, to young engineers or, or entry level people about the impact that they can make, it's very clear that you can make a very solid impact if you come to Monarch as an engineer, either on the either on the physical hardware side or on the AI data science side. So there's a lot of very mission oriented people here. For example, I have one of my autonomy engineers in who, who works with us at our, our Livermore site. He was a Stanford postgraduate, very good on mechanical engineering, but has moved into the software AI space. And now as a Stanford grad, he can take jobs in, in multiple organizations in Silicon Valley, but he likes getting his hands dirty in the field. 
he likes watching the tractor, watching his algorithms being run on on the tractor. So I think for people who really want a mission oriented job, companies like Monarch in terms of what we're doing is, is an attraction because we cover so many aspects of tech, whether that's I would say embedded AI, which is developing vision algorithms so that we can make course corrections on the tractor. Whether it's people who are interested in, I would say, deep data AI, which is diving into our data lake with all of the data that we collect from the tractor and looking for patterns and looking for for ways that we can, for example, recommend optimized driving routes for taking tractors through fields. There's just a, a wealth of, of, of opportunities for people from different aspects of AI whether it's the real-time AI, whether it's the deep analytics AI, whether it's the constraint satisfaction program inside of AI, which is how you're trying to optimize a set of resources to get a job done on the farm. There is just so many skill sets that we're looking for that if you're really, really interested in a career in AI or data science, which has a meaningful impact, then companies like Monarch are, are places you should look to. Chris, looking ahead now, I want to get your take on some of the new developments that you see or anticipate over the next few years. And and what are you particularly excited about for the future of automation, robotics and and overall impact to to the farming industry? And so what we're seeing a trend towards more and more, two things we see, the technology advancing to a state now where we can actually apply more automation and robotics. So, for example, a lot of what we're doing these days is enabled by um, the availability of different types of sensors so that we're not just talking about the LIDARs and the radars, but we're looking at the cameras and um, we're looking at the stereo cameras, the hyperspectral cameras, the multispectral cameras and the GPS technologies and the formats that they're coming in and, and more, more particularly the, the drop in price points and the functionality that's actually been embedded in those sensors may mean that we can do more and more on the farm. And that we can actually develop more and more of these advanced vision algorithms that can work on the farm, but they can also work on a farm in environments which are suboptimal with a lot of spray, a lot of dirt, a lot of sun glare when you're out in the field. So I would say the technology is getting more exciting so that we can apply a lot of the stuff that we've wanted to do for decades in automation in domains like farming. But I would also say on the flip side, the farms themselves are changing to adapt to that new technology. So I mentioned that a lot of the farms now are are moving to vertical trellis um, and those vertical trellis means that we can actually do more automation. We can run tractors or or robots down those rows, but we, because we know where the fruit is now and we can be more predictable, we can actually do things like automating, not just spraying, but we can actually pick the fruit because we can develop actuators now and that could actually go in a fairly straight linear path using machine recognition, machine learning recognition to understand where the fruits are, and then we can actu- we can actuate the tractors. So that, I think the trend we're starting to see now um, with the adaption of the farm and the advancement in the platforms for, 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 for building automation and robotics is that we'll see less and less people on the, and the farm will become more and more of a factory where we'll be, the farm is being run by software, which has been run by robots, and there's less and less people in these dull, dirty, dangerous environments. And for example, I, I feel a glow of satisfaction anytime I can stop a tractor operator having to go in a vineyard during spraying season and he doesn't have to sit on the tractor for 15 hours in a hazmat suit because they're basically spraying a very dangerous herbicide. Chris, thank you so much for coming on today and talking to us. Really appreciate you giving some insight into your own background and more importantly, talking to us about the work you're doing at Monarch Tractor. It's an incredible use of AI, data science, analytics, robotics, and having a good impact. So it's certainly a great case for AI for good and very exciting to see what what you guys are working on and what's in store for the future of your industry. We really appreciate your time. And yeah, sounds like a a fun place to work with a good impact. So thank you so much. Really appreciate JP and um, thanks for the time and helping us get the message out there. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldous Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.aldous.com, to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.